stop meeting like this. And then I'll buy the fifth time, it's just awkward, isn't it? Hello everyone, welcome to another disused railway walk. I'm currently on the Five Pits Trail on the former Great Central Main Line between Nottingham and Sheffield. We're coming up to the little village of Pilsley. I'm gonna try and see what's left of Pilsley Station. Spoiler alert, nothing. But there is a beautiful station master's house, so we'll try and get a look at that. And then I'm gonna have a walk around, try and find the colliery. Now I thought there was nothing left of the colliery, which is why I hadn't been here before, but I was wrong. It turns out there is a little bit left, so it's on private land, so I'm gonna try and get the drone up and get some footage of it um, without having to clamber into someone's garden and stuff. Um, and then I'm gonna turn my attention to Tib Shelf, which is a mile away, exactly a mile away. The Tom Hullet Mile, it's called. Tom Hullet finished third in the famous 1954 Bannister breaking the four minute mile race down at Oxford University. Um, little known person, everyone's heard of Chatterway, everyone's heard of Bashir, everyone's heard of Bannister, but no one's heard of Hullet. And he finished third. He's buried in Tibshelf Cemetery. Five Pits Trail is a makeup of different colliery branches and the Great Central Main Line that joined up all these pits in North Derbyshire. In the 1960s and the 1970s, it was completely re-landscaped. So actually, when you're walking on it, it doesn't feel like you're walking on a railway at all. They took out all the embankments and they filled in all the cuttings, which I don't understand because railways are flat. Surely that's better for walking, but I don't know. Answers on a postcard. Councils, isn't it? But it's still a nice walk in the countryside, even if it doesn't really feel or look like a railway. Right, believe it or not, this is the site of a mainline Great Central Railway Station. Hello mate. Wow, this one's moving. Are you coming to say hello? Hello mate. Look at you. This is a bit where it takes my hand off. How you doing buddy? How you doing, mate? I'm gonna back off because you look like you mean business. How are you, mate? Look at you. You look like something Gandalf would ride. Beautiful. So you're just hanging out at the railway station, are you, mate? Just hanging out at the railway station. And you're gonna be waiting a while if you want a train to come. But I'm gonna get out this edge. Ow, that smacked me in the face. That's 250 quid. Right, I'm gonna walk around a bit more then, because that's literally it, that's the station. There's, there's obviously nap there. So I'm just gonna walk back around to the road. Couldn't get through there. Pilsley Station closed in 1959. Um, around the same time the colliery went there. And, um, and then the, the tracks were lifted in 66 when so many other, other lines went. Dr. Beach and all that stuff. But it's sad to see there's nothing left of the station. Nothing left at all, just the field. Two beautiful horses though. That was a bonus, getting some horse love. There's a the station house, beautiful. So I've walked around the site of the station. This was where the station was, here. You've got the station master's house just there and the Pilsley branch went off, shot straight through there over to the Erewash Valley line. So I'm walking around to try and find a street called, well, a lane called Back Lane, um, where apparently there's some of the old colliery buildings. Um, it feels like a bit of a goosey and I've got midges everywhere. What are the chances my drone gets taken up by that bad boy? Um, I'm hoping this, the, the sun's gonna last and it was a hell of a lot brighter before those ridiculous 
bloody lions appeared. And now it's getting a bit darker and a bit grimmer. It's the village of Pilsley over there. And just through there is where the colliery was up there with the main line going there and then the Pilsley branch going off there. So there are the remains. That was someone's house now. Now that there was the canteen. I didn't realise they turned it into a house. And that's amazing because then at least it's not going to get knocked down anytime soon, in theory. Um, but it also means I can't really get too close to it because it's someone's house, so I mean, I don't want to take the mic. Um, so I'm going to walk around and see if I can't get back onto the old Great Central and then I'll start walking back. So that's all that's left of Pilsley Colliery. Okay, so I'm walking back around now. I'm on back on the Five Pits Trail next to what was Pilsley Railway Station. Obviously, that's someone's house now. I wasn't expecting that, I've got to say. From the photos that I managed to find, it's just like a derelict canteen, the old canteen from the colliery. So I thought, oh, I'll trek up there, see if I can get some decent footage, but I don't want to get too close because it's someone's house, do you know what I mean? So um, I've seen it from a distance. There's a little bit of the colliery left. That's nice. A little bit of history remains, and I think it's great that, that they've you know, done it up and turned it into a house because, like I say, it means... It should last even longer, hopefully. So this land here, this was all sidings. See that telegraph tower or whatever it's called? Telecommunications tower type thing. That's basically where the colliery was. Um, and that's next to uh, next to the house we've just seen. Um, this uh, this was all, all sidings. All sidings. Also a little known fact, Tib Shelf, which is what I'm gonna walk to, um, had a oil well. It was the first UK inland oil well. Um, and what they did was they pumped the oil out of there and they brought it across the fields um, over pipes to Pilsley Station where they loaded it up and took it off to wherever it went off to. And they say that only 10%, or less than 10% of the oil there was ever extracted. Um, and the rest of it's all just sat there waiting for someone to chuck soup on a painting over it. Okay, so I'm leaving Pilsley Colliery and Pilsley Railway Station behind and I'm walking along the Great Central Main Line, or at least, you know, the sort of route of the Great Central Main Line on the Tommy Hullet Mile. Now, interesting story about Tommy. I'm talking like I know him. I was out running in the area, I think it was last summer, and this old boy, he got eye contact with me and I had headphones on because I ate running, if I'm honest. Like, I love walking, I just don't like running, really. I'll run all day if I'm chasing a football, but if I'm, you know, just running, plodding along, it's completely monotonous. So I got my headphones in, trying to distract myself, and this old boy's walking towards me, and you can see he's sort of got eye contact, and he's mouthing something, and obviously I'm like, hello mate. And he says, so you're out running then? You just go along with it, didn't you? Yeah, I, I am, yeah. And uh, he said, um, I used to go out running. He said he used to go out running with Tommy Hullett. Have you heard of Tommy Hullett? And I said, I have, you know, but only because I've seen a plaque. I don't actually know that much about the lad, but yeah. So he said, we used to train together. We used to go out running together. And I said, oh, he's the guy that finished. Is he finished third, didn't he, in the, in the four minute, sub four minute mark? And he said, yeah. And I said, what, what? And he said, when he got back, I said to him, he said, I said, Tommy, what was that all about, mate? You can run faster than that. You can do better than that. And allegedly, Tommy said to him, son of a rat catcher, coal miner, because Tommy worked at the William Thorpe Colliery, which is not far from here. It would not be in my best interests to have won that race. So I thought, that's interesting. It's an anecdotal story, do you know what I mean? It's just some fella in the street that's told me it. But then I looked a little bit more into it and I saw that he was the only person in that race that wasn't at university and wasn't privately educated. He was the only what you call working class guy running in the race. He finished third. But when you see the photos of the three guys at the end posing for the photos, you've got Bannister, who obviously won the race, privately educated, neuro neurologist I think he became in the end. You've got Chataway, privately educated, became a Conservative MP. And the other guy, Brasher, finished fourth. 
he went on to uh, to found the London Marathon actually. But that kind of played into it a little bit for me because I thought, okay, so you got the lad that finished third. Yeah, all the photos are the one, two, and four. Maybe that was a class thing. Or maybe those three lads were mates, do you know what I mean? I don't know. But it was just interesting that the fella told me that story and I found it quite sad, really. And when you look a little bit more into it, you can find little nuggets of information. How he wasn't interviewed after the race. The other people were all interviewed, you know. How do you think you did? All that gubbins. He just got into his car, or got into his brother's car, and drove back to Tibshelf with a programme signed by the guy that finished first, second, and the guy that finished fourth. So I found it quite interesting. It's a sad story, actually, because he, um, he died at the age of 59, which is no age at all. He died in 1990, and he's buried at the uh, Baptist Church in Tibshelf which is where I'm walking to. I'm going to try and see if I can't find his grave. Um, I won't look too hard though, because I'm not going to be traipsing around graves and stuff, but if it, if it pops out at me, then um, then I'd like to pay some respect. Birds are in full song. It's beautiful around here. Like I say, the Five Pits Trail, they, um, they re-landscaped it. You can see, like, you know, it waves up and down. The actual railway line, I think, is, 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 comes along here. I don't think I'm on the track bed at the minute. <sighs> Apologies for the wind, guys. There's a, um, there's a guy, he's got a YouTube channel, and he does, like, flyovers. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, he will fly over a certain railway or a certain canal um, and follow the route of it. And it's all done, like, with Google, Google Maps. I don't know how he does it, to be honest, but... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll show a little section um, from Pilsley to, to Tibshelf, which is what I'm walking, because it actually goes, the line goes straight through the fields and stuff. It, it, it's, you know, I'm just basically just kind of walking around the edge of a farmer's field rather than actually on the track bed. sit in the morning with a coffee that so there's tip shelf there in the distance you got Pilsley back there and over there you're looking towards Morton where we were the other week and then those hills there just over the top of those hills you're getting into into Matlock one thing I've learned um, from doing these walks and stuff and kind of just looking into each of the collieries just finding out you know when they opened when they closed and stuff like that it's just how dangerous it was I and mean, i know that sounds like a bit of a stupid thing to say as if of course coal mining was dangerous but it was staggering so 49 lads back at that one at, at pilsley over the years that it was open 49 lads and, and if you if you go to um i think it's Dur durham miners i think is the website you go there and you can see like the ages and they're no age I and mean, we're talking like nine ten year olds some of them um, and some of the ways that they die as well, you know, getting trapped in between equipment, falling down the shaft as well, that's, you know, the, the, that one comes up a, a lot actually. Um, and explosions as well, because obviously, you know, you've got these seams of gas down there as well. And also you've got, you know, you're underground, hundreds of feet underground, you've got dynamite blasting the coal face down in an area where there's going to be pockets of natural gas. I mean, do you know what I mean? A recipe for disaster. Oh, 
as you can hear from me panting, I'm stomping up a hill now. The railway line would have gone through through the valley there. I'm just walking around it. I swear the wind's getting worse. Sorry about that. I know I apologise in every video, don't I? You see that a lot around around some of these walks and stuff. It's flowers left for people. That I guess you know this was a walk they loved or whatever. I won't read any of the messages. That's personal, but. Um, although they have put it somewhere public to be fair but I'm trying to see if you can make out the, the Pilsley branch that just goes off it's tough to make out because there's obviously there's so many little different banks of fields but it went off there towards Morton which is that village in the distance there joined up with the Erewash Valley line yeah that's where the railway went bang straight across after the uh, 1954 Oxford sub four minute mile race, Tom Allett did, um, did quite a lot for the community in terms of athletics and stuff and went into coaching in the end because I think he basically blew his Achilles tendon. Just That's one injury I've never done actually. I've done most others um, from my footballing days but, but the Achilles tendon, touch wood, is still intact. But it's a horrendous injury and for a runner that's, you know, especially in those days, you know what I mean? Where you didn't have all the surgical advances that you've got now. Um, yeah, you know, your Achilles goes, that's, that's game over in it. But he coached, I think he coached for a while. Um, it's crazy, isn't it? Like, you, you, your dad's a rat catcher. He was a rat catcher for a bit, working for the local council. And then he works at William Thorpe Colliery. I'm pretty sure he, 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 he worked at um, Holmeswood Colliery, which is. Used to be Hardwick called known as Hardwick Colliery, which again is right in the area, part of the Five Pits Trail actually. He used to run to work. That was his training. Running the two miles to work, working a 12-hour shift or whatever it was down the pit, and then two two mile run back. It must be so crazy though to to come from that, you know, from from Tibshelf mining community, working down the pit, catching rats, to then going off to Oxford University. And running against, you know, the elite, I guess, at the time, finishing third. And while they're all congratulating each other and drinking champagne or whatever they did back then, port, probably cheese and port. He's back up to tip shelf and back down the mine. It must have been kind of probably hard to not be bitter by that. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't know the guy, so I don't, I don't know whether he just took that on the chin, but. It must be difficult to, to not be like, well, hang on a minute. But it goes to show, you know, when you have these, these records that get broken, you know, are they really the best? Or are they just the ones that got the best opportunities? You know, is there someone who's in the Highlands of Scotland who's, you know, Council house where he's grown up and he's faster than you St. Bolt given the chance. Do you know what I mean? You don't know, do you? I'm riffing. Sun's just setting. It's near the M1. Can you make that out? like a constant hum. I think I mentioned in the first video I did, because um, I was walking under the M1, it follows the route of the Great Central, basically, which is what I'm on. I mean, you can hear it now, so that's how close it is. All the way up through Leicestershire, veers off into Nottingham and then comes back out and joins up with the M1 basically again up in Derbyshire and then into Yorkshire stream down there
final stomp now up the hill into tip shelf moon's out sun's setting moon's out time for a glass of wine through the top of the hill now coming up to the site of what was tip shelf town railway station and there on the Baptist Church where Tommy Ullett is buried. So I'm walking up to the main road now. This was a massive cutting, went straight through. I'm up, I'm walking up to the road and up to the church there before the sun sets completely. folks hope you enjoyed the walk I couldn't find Tommy Hullett's grave and like I said earlier I wasn't going to traipse around you know all over all over people's remains and stuff it's a really old graveyard so there's loads of really really old headstones and obviously bodies move underground and stuff a fair bit don't they so don't want to be traipsing all over that but it was just nice to um, to make a video and to, and to mention Tommy Hullett and the achievement finishing third down there with the uh, with the Oxford elite um, you know, son of a rat catcher, a coal miner, tough life, battler, a proper battler, going down there and finishing third. And it's just such a tragic story that the guy, you know, passed away at 59, unrecognized really um, for, for that achievement. Um, but obviously they've named this after him. This was 2004, they named it the Tommy Allen Mile. So that's nice, that's a, a nice little bit of recognition from the local uh, parish council for him. And, um, yeah, rest in peace Tommy mate.